For this demonstration, we'll be booting a microwatt BMC and then using that to boot an AC922 server. Our setup on the screen here is two consoles, one for the host server system on the left and one for the BMC on the right. To get going, we'll reset the DCSCM and microwatt will start the boot process. Pausing here for a minute, this is the early boot output from microwatt. It'll print information about the gateway build, start initializing DRAM, and then start the uBoot bootloader, which then starts our Linux kernel. We're running through the boot process a little faster than real time here, just to save viewing time. The microwatt core is running at 100 MHz. Even though it's a fraction of the clock speed of our regular BMC, it's still sufficient for reasonable BMC performance. We'll start user space code about 20 seconds in from boot. The kernel will then start our OpenBMC user space, which is loaded from the onboard eMMC storage accessed through light SD card gateway. The user space code we're running here is a port of the AC922 OpenBMC implementation, which was originally an ARM system to the DCSCM microwatt core. As well as the change in core architecture, this port also needs a set of system on chip peripherals to support BMC functions like GPIOs, I2C interfaces, and an FSI controller to interface to the host processors. Some of these, like the ITC and FSI interfaces, are software implementations, so we do have future opportunities for optimizations by adding these as gateway components instead, reducing the load on the microwatt core. Now that the system is booted, we can log in and take a look around. Proc CPU info shows our microwatt CPU. reporting as a 64-bit PowerPC architecture. We also have a set of I2C buses present for communication with the various devices on the platform, like thermal sensors, fans, and IO expanders. There's also a set of general purpose IOs defined in Gateway and Linux for direct platform signaling. Since we're using software bit banging for the I2C and FSI controllers, we have GPOs defined for the clock, data, and control lines of each interface. Of course, we have a network interface too for remote control of the BMC system. This is implemented as LightEth Gateway plus a simple Linux network driver. Over on our browser now, we can access the OpenBMC web interface. For this port of OpenBMC to microwatt, we've not needed to modify much in the upper layers of OpenBMC infrastructure, just the interfaces to underlying platform hardware. Once everything is loaded, we have the standard OpenBMC web interface, showing some base server system information. This is currently reporting a health issue, so we can view the event logs to see what might be causing that. Here, we have a few events from a previous boot, which we can clear out. Once doing so, the health status shows we are back to normal. We also have access to the system sensors through the web UI. As part of this port, we haven't yet implemented the full set of platform sensors, but we do have an initial set available. Using the ambient temperature sensor as an example, you can see it's about 20 degrees Celsius in the Bring Up lab here. Back at the full sensor list, since the server is still powered off, the fans are reporting at zero RPM. Full fan control will be enabled once the server boots. Over on the power control interface now, we have the current server power status, indicating that the platform is off. We also have the usual BMC type settings to configure boot behavior. Our plan here is to demonstrate a boot of the AC922, so we'll start the server power on operation and get the system running. After clicking the power on button, we'll flip back to our console windows. In the BMC console on the right, we'll follow the BMC logs to see it perform the boot procedure. In the terminal window on the left, we'll connect to the host console by SSHing to port 2200 of the BMC. This is a network accessible channel of the host serial output. As the BMC goes through the system boot process, we see quite a few messages from the initial power on stages. As a rough overview, the BMC is configuring for the host power on state, starting the power supplies, fan control, and then we'll configure and start the host processes. We do get a few warnings in the log output. Some of these are expected, others are due to the prototype nature of this platform port so far. 
At the end of the power on process, the BMC will start the SBE, or self boot engine, on the main processor, and then the rest of the server boot procedure occurs on the AC922 main processors. Now on the left hand side, we can see the serial output from the AC922 host as it comes up. First, we have the SBE output, and then host boot, the second stage of the Power9 platform boot. We're going through the host boot procedure a little faster in real time again, just so we're spending less time watching console messages fly past. One last stage of host boot is to start the OCCs, or on-chip controllers. The OCCs interact with the BMC for full thermal control, and we can see the BMC detecting the running OCCs here. Once detected, the BMC will establish communication with the OCCs, giving the BMC access to a further set of thermal and power sensors. Once OCCs are running, Hostboot will then start the runtime firmware, called Opal. Opal will perform more platform initialization, like enumerating PCI devices, and establishes a suitable runtime environment for Linux. Once Opal has finished its initialization, it then loads and runs the Power9 bootloader, Pettyboot. Pettyboot is a small Linux-based system which probes for operating system installations on any attached storage or network devices. In this case, Pettyboot has discovered the Ubuntu installation on this machine and then, after a short countdown, will load and boot it. At this point, the BMC is no longer involved in the platform boot process as the main processes are now running independently. However, the BMC is still performing the usual runtime monitoring and sideband management tasks of the platform over the FSI, I2C and LPC interfaces to the host. After a short boot process, Ubuntu is up and running and we have a login prompt on the host. Here, we can log into the running Power9 system and take a look around. Proc CPU info shows our Power9 host processes, and like the BMC, this is reporting as a 64 bit PowerPC architecture. However, in this case, we have 128 of them running at 2.3 GHz, rather than our one microwatt CPU on the BMC running at 100 MHz. In this project, we have ported the open source OpenBMC firmware for an IBM AC922 system to an Ant Micro DCSCM module running MicroWatt Gateway controlling a full Power9 host system. All components of this BMC implementation are open source. The DCSCM hardware design available on Ant Micro's GitHub repository, the MicroWatt PowerPC CPU implementation and peripheral gateway, the Linux kernel port, and of course, the OpenBMC firmware components. We have links to the source in use for this port available at the URL shown, and would like to thank the OpenPower Foundation and IBM for their support in this project.